Hello and welcome to another exciting episode of the Hemingway Jones Live Fountain Pen Show. Our little corner of the internet where we talk about fountain pens, inks, journals and journaling, and just about everything and anything that's going to keep you inspired. Welcome, 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 welcome. We have such an exciting show for you tonight. So much going on. Trying a different setup. See how it goes. Looks really bright. I look really bright. I almost look like I'm on green screen, don't I? Like I'm very separated from the background. But it's okay. I like the look. Ooh, wow, I see a lot of likes flying by. Thank you all for the likes. Nice to see all the usable, usable, usual suspects in the house. I hope everyone's doing well this Tuesday evening. So much going on. So much to talk about. We have some interesting things that have come into the library this week that I'm going to share with you. I think you're going to find them very, very interesting, including the last pelican in my flock is home, safe and sound. If pelicans bring babies, who brings pelicans? I think Brendan Schmidt does. That's who. So... Brendan Schmidt sent me a package. Lovely Brendan Schmidt. Just one of the loveliest people I know. He'll send a care package to me a couple times a year just because. No real strings attached. No strings attached at all. It just says, this is a thank you to you for all you do for the fountain pen community is how he puts it. It's just so lovely of him. And, and he really outdid himself this time. So we have a great package from Atlas Stationers and the mighty Brendan Schmidt. Atlas, who never shrugs, has sent a package. I think you're really going to be interested with everything they brought. And we're going to get to it very soon because it'll probably take me a lot of time to get through all this fun stuff. And I really want you to see it, including an amazing Pelican grail pen so thanks for all the likes here's some kind of a channel update for you vincenzo will be joining us next week for a chat vincenzo from fountain pen therapy lovely chap don't know if he's here tonight maybe he'll pop in if he's not but um, we will have a nice little chat about our pens, our channels, what we're working on, and what keeps us inspired. Thanks for the likes, guys. I really appreciate it. I see a little icon, little thumbs flying by. It's very encouraging. Sometimes I need encouragement. Sometimes I get discouraged. I'll be honest. I, I sometimes like work really hard on something. I put it out, and it doesn't do well. And I feel like, ah, oh, you know, maybe it wasn't up to channel standards or something sometimes it's just the algorithm and how things break sometimes it's nothing you do it's just how how the ball bounces so and sometimes a video you put up doesn't do that well and then it finds an audience over time i find that really satisfying um i do i do thanks guys i see all those likes i really appreciate them so um i did want to tell you kind of a story on the Skillshare collaboration, I think you'll find interesting. So I'm going to talk about that too. Paul David Artist Club says, so glad you're getting together with Vincenzo. Thank you. Yeah, me too. Me too. Eric Linneman reminded me I don't work for an algorithm. Very true. Very true. I work for you guys, for all of us, and for my own artistic expression. So before I tell you the story about Skillshare, before I get to the package from Brendan Schmidt and all the other fun stuff I really want to share with you this evening, I do want to do, I do want to share with you the pen that I'm using these days. Um, I'm sure many of you know what this is, but this is what I'm using. It's the Origin, the Mont Blanc 149. Origin series, I put it aside. I put it away. I wanted to spend more time with my Pelican. I did, but this was calling me. 
It was calling me the way it used to do. It was calling me back home. You guys are lucky I can't reach my acoustic guitar. I'd do my best Robert Plant for you if I could. But um, with that lyric I just gave you there. But uh, very pretty pen. You see the engraving. Very similar to the vintage one. By the way, yesterday on... Um, I guess not really on their site. I mean, they have it posted on their site. But Mont Blanc did a show which was really fascinating. And it was called 100 Years of Meisterstück, Story of an Icon. And they went through the Meisterstück from 1924 to present. And it was fascinating. I forget the gentleman who led the discussion, but it was brilliant. He was holding up pens, showing design details, all sorts of things. I found it fascinating. So that really got me inspired to take this out again. Very, very fun pen. Very rich experience using this. A lot of associations. A lot of history here. Really fun. This is my third ink in here. Third ink. So I, I started out with um, Midnight Blue. And then I went to a clay. And now, maybe some of you eagle-eyed viewers know what this is. But this is Pearl Noir. So I'm going through a lot of ink with this pen. Writing quite a bit. It's really fun to write with. It's got a little bit more feedback than my other Mont Blancs. A little bit more, but still very smooth. A. What do you think of my A? What do you think of that A? I, I like this A. I'm kind of married to this A. I've been using this one quite a bit. There's this other A. Are you familiar with this one? I don't really like that one. I call it a kidney bean A. But I really, really like this A. Speaking of A... Do you guys know the history of A? Are you up on your letters in the history? Because it's really kind of fascinating. And I, I might not be exact on this, but here we have A. A was inspired from Egyptian writing, which is really interesting. So you had the Rosetta Stone, right? So here's your Rosetta Stone. And it helped to decipher hieroglyphics. And what it had on it were hieroglyphics here. And then ancient Greek, I believe, was at the bottom. And in the middle was my favorite language. Do, do you guys know? Everyone knows about hieroglyphics in ancient Greek. Do you know which language was in the middle? It was demotic. Demotic. I just like the word demotic. It just sounds really cool. So what was demotic? Demotic would almost be like cursive was a few decades back. It was the written form of hieroglyphics. So it was sort of the vernacular version of hieroglyphics. And in Demotic, I believe there was a character that looked something like this. Which was, I believe, a, um, a vowel sound similar to A. And it was for their ox in Egypt which I am pretty sure was Aleph. Aleph was this letter. And curiously enough, the second letter of the alphabet looked like that, like a Greek key, which is interesting since we started out talking about the Rosetta Stone. And this was called Beat. Some of you are already figuring out where we're going here. 
So what happened was that this demotic borrowed alphabet was adapted into the Semitic languages. And I'm doing very quick shorthand here, okay? And as it did, it started to get simplified. And before you know it, you had an A that looked a bit like that. Then as it went into the Greek, and once it hit the Greeks, Aleph became Alpha. And Beat became Beta. And that's how you get the alphabet. I hope this isn't too remedial for you guys. I find this fascinating. You might all know this, but maybe some of you don't. So um, come with me on this quick journey. So it's passing through all these different cultures. So we're in the Greeks. We got Alpha Beta. Obviously alphabet. Okay. So Greek or Hellenic culture spreads. And where does it spread? To my one of my favorite places, Italia, to Italia. But at the time, the dominant culture was the Etruscans. And the Etruscans get you to a pretty good A, and you know, maybe it came before that, but you get this A, but this is where it's important. They handed it off to the Romans. And the Romans did one of my favorite innovations. I'm pretty sure it was the Romans that did this. And it's my favorite innovation in letters in the alphabet. Do you guys know what it is? Serifs. That was the Roman innovation. So that A became... And I believe the reason is when they're carving it onto the buildings, and I think this was the size of their chisel. And I just put the little feet. I mean, maybe it was to keep it in line. I'd love to talk to someone who really studies this sort of thing to know definitively why. But the Romans loved serifs. So you get our alphabet as you know it. And it hasn't changed since. In 2,000 years, our alphabet hasn't changed. Except, I suppose, you could say, you know, in the various forms of cursive. Or our demotic. Which have been extant for a very long time. Middle Ages, Renaissance, Italic has been around for a while. All sorts of versions of these letters. A, B. It's funny, because when you think the alphabet is alphabeta, right? So the ABs, essentially, is how they called the alphabet. We call it the ABCs. So it's not much different. And also, of course, alphabet. But we kind of forget sometimes that it's alf, aleph, and beat. So it's interesting how things evolve. All right, well, hopefully I didn't lose... The majority of my audience with that. I just find it fascinating. I love things like that. There's more to it. Uh, maybe I'll do a video. Because like. Symbols for wavy water. Turned into M. So that's where M comes from. Boy I'm going through a lot of paper here. O. You know where O comes from? That's a terrible O. That looks like a black hole. But O, do you know where O comes from? O came from a symbol that looked quite a bit like this. It's for an I, which is ironic because in English it would sound like an I, but it wasn't. It's an O. That's where O came from. And N, I believe, was a snake, if memory serves. Boy, if I knew I was talking about this, I'd do a little more research. Um, I believe it's, it was a snake for N. I'm trying to think if I can remember any of the other ones. But pretty fascinating stuff. So there you have it. The History of the Alphabet. And this beautiful pen which I just can't get enough of. I, I really, The more I write with it, the more I like it. I also feel like it's sort of 
opening up a bit. It's... I don't usually believe that nibs break in. But I feel like this one is. I feel like it's getting lusher as time goes on. It's getting wetter. But I quite like it. All right. So there you have it. A little bit of alphabet. A little alphabet soup for you. I hope you don't mind when I get didactic. I don't mean to. It's just that these things come up and I find them fascinating. This is the kind of stuff that keeps me engaged. Interesting. So this is also the time of show where I usually talk about the video I'm putting up. <laughs> I'm laughing because I see Kate brought to you by the letter A. It's like Sesame Street. Brought to you by the letter A. A. So this is usually when I tell you what video is going to be up this Thursday. There will be a video up this Thursday. I want to tell you the story about it because it was going to be my collaboration with Skillshare. And what happened was... It's really fascinating. So you, there's an intermediary in this case, and they approach me and they say, would you be interested in a brand sponsorship? And I say, possibly, what are the details? And they say, we want you to mention it up front. Of course, disclose it on YouTube that it's a sponsored video. We're going to pay you some money. It's a modest amount, but it's a start. We want a 45-minute commercial embedded in the video, which, frankly, I'm hesitant to do. At the same time, you know, you could take that money, it could buy a new pen, perhaps, you know, that kind of thing. So it might be good for the channel. So I go, okay, well, I'll give it a shot. I'll give it a try. So they send a deck and the deck is pretty sophisticated. It has all the requirements, everything they want me to do and say, and I look at it and there's nothing on there that I disagree with. In fact, I think Skillshare is awesome as a thing and a service. It is awesome. I, I would be proud to um, represent them in any way, shape, or form. But here's the thing. I film it Saturday morning. I film the whole video. I get it ready. They ask to submit it. They want to see it, and they want to sign off on it. So I think, well, that's fair enough. Oh, thanks for all the likes, guys. I see somebody disliked. Boo, boo. Um, I appreciate the likes more than the dislikes, but thank you. <laughs> so they send this deck and I flip through it. I do everything that they ask in the deck and then I submit it to be approved and I get feedback. Well, they like most of it, but we want you to say this additional things and we want you to show these examples and all this. And already it was running kind of long. Like it's supposed to be a 45 second commercial and you guys know that... I don't really do anything quickly, you know, I don't, I try, but I, I don't think, don't do things very quickly. And I, I'm not the most pithy in the way I speak. I like to elaborate. So I'm cutting, cutting, cutting. I want to get it down. I don't want you guys burdened with a commercial, but at the same time, it's a really good service. Um, but they're asking for this additional stuff. And I, I start thinking, you know, I'm just not going to do that. I'm just not, I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to, um, I'm not going to recut a video again when I followed everything that you asked me to do and now you're asking for additional things. And now the money that they were offering no longer seems worth it to me. Now it's a burden. Now I'm like, I, I don't want to face it. I don't want to do it. So... I edited two different versions of the video because I'm a very prudent fellow. So I have the version with the commercial. I have the version without the commercial. The version without the commercial is going to air Thursday at noon because I'm just not going to do it. So I'm probably hurting the channel a bit. They probably won't ever want to work with me again. But, you know, you just can't change things after the fact and ask for additional details if we had a deal. And I love sharing this stuff with you guys. I should probably not talk about it, but I think it's fascinating. 
And I think you guys probably find it kind of interesting too. Um, ever since I started making videos and this kind of stuff comes up, I st I'm still sort of amazed by it and, and really interested in it and sometimes overwhelmed. Sometimes a lot of different offers and things come in and I'm starting to send them to Helen because they give me a little bit of stress sometimes. Like I feel like I have a lot of responsibility on me even beside making videos and life. <laughs> you know what I mean? But if you want to do something with me, I love doing stuff, especially with somebody as sophisticated, interesting, and beneficial as Skillshare. But if you or your intermediaries are going to add extra steps after I've done eight, nine hours of work, yeah, not going to do it. So I might post it in the members section. So I might post the commercial or the one with the commercial back behind the scenes so you guys can see what I, what I did. And um, yeah, so memberships available on this channel, by the way. And Illuminati and Cognoscenti members, we write letters to each other. Super fun. And I put extra videos in the back as a lot of blooper reels and things like this, you know. So um, if you heard me before speaking about Skillshare and then you see it never happen, this is why. I just felt like it was too much. Okay. There's things I'll do for money. And there's things I won't. I would do anything for love, but I won't do that. Oh no. Okay. So finally, I hit the mic. Atlas Madness. Are you ready for Atlas Madness? I'm ready for some Atlas Madness. I love this nib, so cute. Where should we start? Let's start with what's close to hand. So these came, Atlas color swatches. That's kind of fun. Ooh, noisy. I'm not entirely sure what these are. Oh, okay, oh, that's very cool. So you can put your inks and then you get a little Atlas. So instead of who is John Galt, it's who is Brendan Schmidt. Who is he? So very nice. That's a very nice thing. I like these. I'm not sure what you do with them next. What do you do with them next? Put them in a book? I guess you do with them whatever you like. So very cool. Atlas color swatches. Plus, you gotta love Atlas. Even if you're... Even separate from the store. It's just cool. So I like that. Thank you for that. All right. And of course, if you get something, you got to have. I'm going to put this someplace where I can see it every day because it's Brendan. He's just the man. Such a lovely fellow. One of the nicest people I know. You know, I'm so happy I get to meet people. And the friendship I have with Brendan is one of the best things that has come out of my channel. That and the relationship that with you guys, this community that we built. We built this. Not just me, you guys. Actually, more you than me. And a Chicago hot dog with a fountain pen. Love it. Kind of looks like Brendan. Kind of does. And, oh, nice. I think some of this is March themed. So, oh, geez, look at this one. Look at that. Love it. It's like he's here. Hey, Brendan, how are you? Hey, what's up? Peace. Peace. What's up, Hemingway? Yeah, you're just the best, man. No, you are, Brendan. You are my boy. Isn't it like he's here? I love him. You know, you guys know I love him. We have a bromance. Okay. I don't want... This is like dead air, so I'm going to fill it up with stuff. Look at this. Vintna inks. Pretty cool. I've never seen this before. It's pretty. It's pretty packaging. Um, it's funny because it says take a dip. So I thought maybe it was for dip pens. And that's why I was reading it. But it says fountain pen inks. So I'm going with fountain pen inks. 
I kind of don't want to mess up the top. So you know what I do when I don't want to mess up the top? I take this and I just kind of turn it. I stick the knife in there and see what's going on in there when I turn it. Lots of commando references on this channel, ladies and gentlemen. That's a nice looking bottle. Ooh. So I'm excited about this. I kind of like how this bottle looks a bit like an apothecary bottle or something. I like it. Or maybe even like a model ink paint. But it's pretty. And it looks like an interesting color. It looks a bit coppery, right? A bit brown. I like it. We're not going to open it right now, though. But I like it. So very nice of Brendan to send this. Okay, what else do we have? Lots of exciting things. This. Achilles. Achilles, come down. Greek heroes, Achilles. Wow. I am a big fan of the Iliad. I find Homer fascinating. I don't believe that Homer was a person who wrote those works. I believe that Homer was a person who performed them or maybe refined them. But Achilles, boy, I could do a lot with this. All the different themes. But I, I think Homer probably had his name attached to the works because he was a brilliant performer who maybe brought them to their final form. Is this a purple ink? Wow, is that full? Look how, can you see how full that ink is? I would call that brimming. Wow, that's full. I'm afraid to put this back on. I'm going to clean it a little. Shop towel. You got to have your shop towels, everyone. Anybody watching buy shop towels if you're not using them with your fountain pens you are missing out you'll be able to use them and reuse them they're absorbent they're tough they're just fantastic so it's kind of purpley black i, I like this achilles so here's another interesting thing about homer there's no blue in Homer. Everything is red. Blue is one of the last colors you learn to see. And in the ancient world, very few things in nature that they saw were blue. And I know you're thinking, well, the sky is blue. But you'd be surprised. Most people, if you're not taught how to see blue, you would see the sky as white or red. So pretty fascinating stuff. No blue in Homer. The wine dark sea. The other interesting thing about Homer is that all the references aren't very nautical. So it seems like it wasn't so much written by the Greeks as their predecessors. The sort of landlocked uh, proto-Greeks that came down probably from the mountains because... Boats are described like wagons going across the field. It seems like it's an older story that was updated to a Hellenic structure. So that's fascinating about Homer. But enough of that, because I have to thank some people. Thank you for Super Chats. The mighty Lad Gardner. Oh, laddie, my friend. The real Homer, Bart's dad. Do oh! 25 bucks from the mighty lag gardener who does so much for this channel you guys those times i do get discouraged the person that brings me back to center nine times out of ten well it's either ali j or laddie i really appreciate both of you guys for that you guys put up with me um whining thank you i should be paying you laddie for the for the psychiatry and the mighty Marcus Souza. Thank you. He says, good evening, everyone. $25. Thank you. Going into the lighting fund. You can see the lights are on. It's very bright. I'm separated from the background. Very, very cool. Thank you, Marcus. Lovely, lovely guy. Making a huge impression, Marcus. You've um, really, really a huge part of this channel. Thank you, my friend. BJ says, not quite noodlers, but 
close. Yeah, you know what, BJ? What's funny is um, it kind of reminds me of iced tea. You ever buy iced tea like at Trader Joe's? It's like level. It's full. You get your money's worth with iced tea. I like that they have this one. It's green tea, and I think it's either has honey or no sweetener. I forget. My wife buys it for me. But I open up the cap. I have to be very careful. I spill everything I pour. Like my daughter drinks a lot of milk and and I pour like my iced tea and whatnot. Every time I, I pour something, I spill it. <laughs> and uh, that's so full, that iced tea. Oh, someone else. Sunny. Sunny Whited. 1999 Super Chat. Thanks for all you do. Thank you for all you do. You guys keep me motivated, keep me inspired. Thank you. Thank you so much. 1999. Very, very kind. Thank you. Really appreciate it. Really appreciate it. Okay, let's get back into our show and tell, shall we? Once again, though, guys, get the shop towels. You will not believe. I, you can use this to clean your car, your car windows. Use it for your inks. Use it for everything. It's so handy. So handy. Okay. We're going to show you a few more things because I have a bunch here. I'm going to show you some paper from Atlas. And then I want to show you something that's not from Atlas that I bought that I think you're going to really like. And then I'm going to get back to some Atlas stuff. <sighs> Look at this, huh? Soft ring. And when they say soft, this is like silicon. It's like squishy soft. Isn't this nice? Campus. Kokuyo. Six millimeter ruled, made in Japan. Obviously, it's mostly written in Japanese. It does say made in Japan in English right here. So beautiful yellow. I'm a big yellow fan. I'm not sure of the paper, guys. Not sure. I'm looking to see if it has any weight. I'm sure there's details on Brendan's website at Atlas. But I don't see anything here. But let's see what it feels like. Oh, wait, is that it? No. This says 40 here, but I don't know what that is. Okay, so ruled. Ooh, this is nice. It has the date and a number. Wow, this is this is shiny and soft. This is like a this is a um a skating rink. This is an ice rink for your nibs, guys. Ooh, it's very tactile. It's just smooth. It almost feels kind of relaxing. Like if you touch your fingertips to it, it almost just feels really like so alluringly smooth. You want to keep touching it. It's really nice. Ooh, Puppet Access, my friend. Five dollars. You never told us Vinta's ink color. Vinta's my favorite ink manufacturer. I love their chroma shading inks like Mermaid Sienna. I never told you to gala because I can't read it. I can't. I can't. But I do have a magnifier. Do you ever see this? I have a magnifier. I'm going to tell you the story of my magnifier. Now that you distracted me, puppet, puppet access. See this magnet? I bought this at um, Ikea in the late 1980s. And it has a light. See? And it has a magnifier. And there's an iron base. And it just sort of... It sort of goes in there. Oh, it's really dusty. Oh, I'm, I'm a bad housekeeper in my library. But this is the only way I'll be able to see this. So, Fortaleza? Fortaleza? Fortaleza. I, I don't know what color this is. Made in the Philippines. Handmade in the Philippines. Very cool. Fortaleza. That's the color. It's a kind of a rusty brown with some shading. Fortaleza is the Vintner color. So, sorry, I am a bad host if I'm not mentioning the names. Let's get back to this paper, though, shall we? Shall we? It's awesome. Ooh, smooth. So, this is really nice. This will be great for filming because this is very unobtrusive, and I don't think you guys will see it if I film it from the side. I'm very conscious about filming papers but sometimes I need big paper and this will work well 
So Brendan also sent this, which is one of my favorites for filming. You've seen these week in and week out for filming because they're a good size. Here's my hand. It's about the size of my hand. My hand's pretty big. I'll hold it up to this other one. See, pretty big. But this opens up, Paprite, Claire Fontaine, and I can film and you can see it pretty well. So this is really kind of him. He knows I love these. So very nice. Thank you, Brendan. Got some more Brendan stuff. But first, I'm going to interrupt by showing you something I bought for the channel. The magic of handwriting. Look at this beast of a book published by Tashin. Because who else? Who else would publish it? By the way, this is a very tough book to get. It's very hard to find in English. Not as hard to find in other languages. If you can speak French or German, you'd be able to find it fairly easy. But in English, not so easy, guys. Not so easy. It was published a while back. And it's just not that avail available. All right, I'm going to have to hold this up to the big camera so that you can see it. So it has all these beautiful examples of handwriting. You guys know how I'm crazy about historic handwriting. So we get letters. This one from, oh, oh guys. Do you know who this letter is from? J.M.W. Turner, one of my favorite painters. The uh, the gentleman who who painted the fighting Tamara Tamara from the National Gallery who painted slave ship that's here in Boston, absolutely brilliant painter. Um, so here's Benvenuto Cellini. Claude Monet, Claude Monet's letter. So quite a few letters. Oscar Wilde. Ooh, Mary Wollstonecraft Shelley. Here's her handwriting. Um, who's this? Looks familiar. T.S. Eliot. Isn't this great? Is it just me, guys? Am I the only one? Or are you digging this? Because I think this is great. Was it worth $130? Was it worth that for this? I think it was. I'm going to learn a lot from this book and you're going to see it on this channel. Uh, I see Ginsburg. This actually was a, an exhibit. And I think it was at the Morgan Library. Here's Alan Turing. One of the great heroes of history. Who was not treated kindly. I wish Allie J were here. She would appreciate this one. So pretty, pretty brilliant. Pretty amazing stuff. Different philosophers, handwriting. Do you dig it? I like it. I really do. So pretty large book. Pretty heavy. It's like a textbook. And the best part is that it is in perfect condition perfect like they never read it i got this from a used book shop but it's very very good condition it doesn't feel hardly even read and i don't mind if it were but i'm pleased that it's not look at this lovely handwriting <sighs> it's pretty great guys i love it love it Okay, so I'm going to put this aside and get to some of the rest of the stuff that Brendan sent. First, I'm asking you for something. You, just for something. About half of you watch this, don't subscribe. Just hit the button, won't you? I think you like these videos. You see that I'm trying to entertain you. So I'd appreciate it. Subscribe, join our merry band. We go to some amazing places. Amazing. Wait until you see what's coming up, guys, on the channel. Uh, famous authors and their fountain pens. Part two. Yes. 
your favorite fountain pens in film part two filmed scheduled yes so much stuff a new video with helen it's a secret project but i think you guys are going to like it it's already filmed edited ready to go and this week throw away all your inks but only keep three that's this week's video so there you have it all right let's get back to show and tell shall we all right so once again from the amazing brendan schmidt lovely lovely guy i know it's Warringall, but i don't like to say Warringall, so i say that and jewel because i just like to say it there and jewel it's the um the german in me i suppose <laughs> but um wearing i don't i don't like that hard g but whatever but that's what it is but this is their atlas their special edition should we have a look i think we should don't stab yourself hemingway by the way, if anybody noticed, this is a Helle straight blade, wood handle. Beautiful, beautiful Scandinavian knife. One of my favorites. I tried not to use it because it's so pretty, but it's so slicey dicey sharp. It's just fun to use. And, I, you know, knives are meant to be used. So use it, I do. For opening letters, for opening packages, and for opening ink boxes ooh ooh shimmery shimmer very nice very very nice let's take a look at it but um oof wait it's gonna make a cool noise hold on oh no it didn't i thought it was gonna make like a vacuum noise i like that noise it's making a cool foamy noise. So this looks fun. Atlas. Very, very nice. So you'll see all these colors on the channel very, very, very soon. But we got, we have time to get to this. Oh, Pelican last pelican can we get some likes for the pelican oh boy oh boy this is epic guys this is epic you know when you know what something is but you haven't faced it and i'm funny I it takes me a little bit of time to get comfortable with things. It's so generous of Brendan to send these. But then I get the box and I open the box, but I didn't open anything inside of it until 15 minutes before the show. I took everything out of their bubble wraps and I lined them up on my desk. I almost couldn't face the fact that this is here. It's just it's kind of shocking, but kind of kind of cool. But here we have it. Trying to remember how this opens. Okay. Does it open this way? Or does it just slide out? Pretty sure it doesn't Pelican open from the front. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> you know when you know something, but you're... I'm nervous. I'm so excited. Ooh. Passion. Passion. Oh, yes. I love the smell of pleather in the morning. You know... I don't care what they put these things in. It's still so exciting. By the way, guys, this this is one of the things that cracks me up, okay? Gosh, this is gorgeous. Oh, man. Oh, man, this is gorgeous. Wow. Okay, I'm sorry. I'm going to try to stay focused and do a show. But look at this. Look how the light is hitting this. But I'm going to try to be professional and do a show. I've heard so many people talk about how like Jin Hao pens come in plastic and they're like, that fake pen comes in plastic. And it's like, come on, you know, almost every pen comes in plastic. Here's one of the most elite pens anywhere and it's in plastic. 
You know why? Because it's a good idea to put something in a protective coat of plastic. Wow. Wow, guys. Oh, my. Oh, my. Is this pretty? 18 karat. Black blue. I'm being very careful. Wow. 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 It's a good size, guys. It's a good size. Look at that. Look at that color. I thought I really wanted the green and black because I feel like it's classic. But now I'm looking at this. Oh, wow. The blue is so much nicer. And it just looks so much better with the black. Am I wrong? Am I crazy? Am I, am I crazy, guys? It is gorgeous. Gorgeous. Should we take a look at the nib? Dare I? Oh can't take it wow 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 look at that oh it's a fine look how dry my hands are <laughs> no actually don't look at how dry my hands are look at that nib wow wow all those curlicues and the gorgeous pelican gorgeous i love the fins i love it love it Wow. All right. I think it's time to fill it with one of these choices. I'm thinking Achilles, but I want to make sure it's not shimmer. It's shimmer. Uh, I don't put shimmer in pens like this. Um, I guess it's going to be Vintna. Because Vintner is not Shimmer. Yep. I have to go through extra steps here, guys. Mm -mm. I'm going to go back to full camera while I do this. I just feel like I need to write with it. it right? Don't you want to see it writing for the first time? I sure do. Try not to bleed live on the air. You ever see Predator? You know when um, Jesse Ventura's character, they're like, you're bleeding. And he says, I ain't got time to bleed. That's a good line. But the best line is what the guy says next. He says, do you have time to duck? That's a better line, I think. Because it kind of calls him out for being all macho. I like that. Okay, let's go back. Alrighty then. Oh, geez, guys. <laughs> this is a recipe for disaster. <laughs> I don't do well with these. Uh, what do I do? Help me. Help me, Obi-Wan. See, this is when I would call my wife <laughs> and she's not here. No. Oh, no. See, I don't have fingernails. Do you guys know I just don't like fingernails? Mm, boy, I wish. I almost wish I could reach another ink. But um, we're going to go with this and try not to make a mess. That worked. <laughs> I am not good at tidiness. And when they, there's extra barriers in the way... It's it can be problematic for me. <laughs> Even though it's a good idea, I mean, you know, your ink is nice and fresh. By the way, this is a waterproof map. I thought ahead. So we're going to fill up this amazing pen. Let's see what happens. Don't spill it, Hemingway. Ooh, do you hear how thirsty it sounds? I always do it at least twice. Ooh, thirsty. Let's do it again, because I want to hear that noise. I'm not going to talk this time. Ready? Oh, yeah. Thirsty pen. Oh, you know what? I went the wrong way. Classic. Classic. It's because I'm doing it on camera. It's a little nerve-wracking. 
You'd be amazed at the stuff you kind of mess up when you do it on camera. You can write for 10 minutes and every line looks perfect. And then you turn on a camera and then suddenly it starts skipping because you're not holding it at the right angle or something. But it's just sort of the, the way things go when you are filming. Okay. Looks like there's more ink on there. First thing you have to do is put the cap back on because there's nothing more dangerous to me than a uncapped bottle of ink. Okay, I think we're good. Mostly good. Let's see what happens. Pelican. Ooh. Nice. Very nice. You know, people told me that the M800 doesn't feel like the M1000. It does, though. It's got a bit of softness to it. This is a fine nib. It's pretty smooth. It's pretty nice. Makes a good noise. Good scribing noise. Wow. I like it. Do you guys like it? I like it. Blue. Black. And it's Vintna Fortaleza Ink. Boy, this is an enthusiastic writer. This nib flies with alacrity. That's how I would characterize it. Wow, this feels really nice. I like this color too. I'm not sure I'm gonna keep it in here, but I like how coppery it is. And it has a lot of variation. It's a bit orange here, a bit brown. A bit beige over here. I don't know if you can quite make that out. Can you see the different color? It's pretty nice. Wow. I could almost forget I'm on the air and just write for the next hour with this. Just stupendous. Absolutely stupendous. A great size, elegant, beautiful pen. Sent by the lovely and amazing Brendan Schmidt from Atlas Stationers. One of my favorite shops, even if I didn't know them personally. I love the energy. I love their commitment to customer service. Pretty great stuff. Pretty great stuff, guys. Wow. What a beautiful pen. What a nice gift. What a, what a great guy. All the videos I'll be able to do with this. You know there will be comparison videos with this and other hard-hitting pens. I suppose I'll compare it to everything. Even some odd ones. I like to make strange comparisons. So stay tuned for those. I haven't actually filmed a comparison in a while. So maybe this will inspire me to do one. And now I have a fleet a flock of pelicans, an M200, an M600, an M800, and an M1000. Which one's my favorite? Time will tell. Time will tell. 
but it's a beautiful pen. Very nice. Thank you, Brendan. Thank you so much for sending this over. Absolutely lovely of you. So generous. It's moving, the generosity. Pretty great stuff. A lot of stuff came in the library this week. A lot of new things. A lot of exciting things, guys. Great things coming up on the channel. Things I'm really proud of. Things I'm dying for you to see. I wish I could show you them all at once. Wouldn't it be cool if we had like eight videos go live all at once? It'd be like a marathon. Maybe someday. Maybe someday. Jeannie Price says the Pelican piston system is one of the best on the market. It is. The, one of the things I'm really impressed with Pelican is how few flushes it takes for it to be clean. Or at least to seem clean. <laughs> It's usually only a few, three, maybe four, and it's clean. That's impressive that it just it just flushes them out. Geconia says a squadron. Indeed. Indeed. So pretty neat stuff. I'm fighting the instinct of putting blue ink in here. I may I may have to swap it out for some blue. But a, a pretty amazing pen. What a really amazing nice gesture from a personal friend and a friend of the channel people once more i ask you you in particular who have been subscribed you made it through almost an hour you must like this video just take a moment click subscribe i'd appreciate it i love getting to know you guys comments are always fun i read almost every comment and i reply to almost every comment so i'm one of the most accessible people i think on youtube i have no way of gauging that but i feel like it's true so there you have it well ladies and gentlemen i feel like we've done a lot tonight i think brendan and i had a great time thanks my friend very kind of you i really appreciate it he is the best I'm sure we'll have him on before too long. Next week, Vincenzo from Fountain Pen Therapy. Lovely guy and an incredible name of a channel. Super excited about that. I appreciate you all for being here. Thanks so much for watching. New video Thursday at noon. Throw away all your inks and you have to keep three. That's the premise. Which three? I have over 100 inks now. 103. So how do I keep three? That's, that's the struggle. So that's coming Thursday. So I hope you'll check that one out. And I hope you enjoy it. So thank you all for watching. I promise we'll see each other again. You and me. We're going to see each other again very soon. So don't be sad. We'll see each other again further up the road. So thank you all. Love you all. Take care.